Breaking up is hard to do in 22 minutes is the third episode of the third season of Full House and there will be spoilers as I discuss various things in this episode and talk about things that I really enjoyed. So there will be spoilers from now and we start off rather delightfully with Michelle and Danny playing with a little basketball and they're wearing very similar colours. It's really, really beautiful to look at and it's a nice fun way to kickstart things. Then we have three main parts of the episode. The the bulk of it focuses on Jesse and Becky, so I will discuss that last. We also have stories with Stephanie and Michelle, and the one with Michelle shows her starting to steal things from other people when they're playing with them, when they're using them. She doesn't really know how to share. And I feel like Michelle's personality is obviously starting to show as she gets older. It's really great fun to see. And it starts off with her stealing when they're uh, in the sand pit with some other little children, which is absolutely adorable. And we have this brilliant scene where everybody's sitting around the table and they're sharing one pancake. They're passing it between them with the hope, of course, that Michelle will learn the joy of sharing. And I have to say, it's very delightful. And it didn't necessarily go the way I'd expected. I've seen this episode before, but I couldn't remember how it played out. And I genuinely expected Michelle, once the pancake came to her, when Danny asked to share the pancake, I honestly thought she'd eat it. So the fact that she shared it, or, well, crumbled it up and then shared it, was actually really surprising and really lovely to see. So that was a really nice part of the story. The one with Stephanie is sweet, but kind of disgusting as well, because it starts off with her loose tooth becoming embedded in an apple, and she refers to it as having a slimy, skinny string of tooth guts, which made me feel disgusting, but also... That's a perfectly accurate... I feel sick. A perfectly accurate description for that bit of thread that the tooth hangs on... Oh, no, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I, I've got this... I, well, I was going to say I've got a weird fear of loose teeth. I guess it's maybe not that weird. I imagine a lot of people have this fear. But whenever I think about it, it does remind me of having loose teeth as a child and that, to quote, slimy skinny string of tooth guts. So really disgusting, but actually very, very accurate. And she quite thoughtfully decides to leave the tooth fairy milk and cookies because, as she says, Santa Claus gets milk and cookies once a year, because he works once a year, or at least delivers presents once a year, whereas the Tooth Fairy works every single night and never gets anything except a bag of teeth. And I thought that was actually really sweet and thoughtful. And then Stephanie ends up getting $20 because Danny accidentally took the wrong bill out of his wallet, which I just thought was uh, really good fun. And I genuinely don't remember how much I got per tooth from the Tooth Fairy. I have no recollection of how much I got. I know I did get money, but I can't remember how much, but definitely not $20. So again, a really nice, sweet part of the narrative. Then we get to Jesse and Becky. And this argument starts between them because they've been riding with DJ and then Jesse reveals that he doesn't want to go riding again. He doesn't enjoy it. And quite rightly, Becky points out that she always does his stuff, such as going down to the club. So it wouldn't be fair if he didn't make the effort to do things that she enjoyed. And they don't really come to an agreement about whether they're going to continue doing each other's stuff. But unfortunately, Jesse kind of puts his foot in his mouth when he's talking to Michelle. And he's talking about how selfish Becky is being, which I think is ludicrous, and saying that she's starting to get on his nerves. And I guess all of that would be fine if it wasn't for the fact that the baby monitor picked it up and Becky heard it on the baby monitor. It's fine for him to feel the way he feels, but to say it so bluntly and for Becky to overhear it, it's not great. And they have this horrendous argument. They managed to put some comedy into the argument. For example, the bit with this step and this step and this step, I thought was pretty entertaining. But it's still quite uncomfortable to watch as they're shouting and fighting and they storm, well, Becky storms out and that's it for their relationship as far as they're concerned. It, it's over. But we know they don't want it to be over because Becky lingers at the door and then Jesse opens the door, but by that point, Becky had gone. So we know they don't want this to be over, and neither do DJ and Stephanie. So they try and get them back together, which was very sweet. I have to say, all of the puppy dog faces that people were making, I rather enjoyed. And awkwardly, Jesse has a date. 
And the only reason he he found a date for that night is because Becky said she had plans. But I think for the viewer, it was pretty obvious that when Becky said she had plans, she didn't mean a date. And the fact that Jesse found a date really put a spanner in the works for any hope of them reconciling. But at the same time, his date did a, a really wonderful thing. I don't know if she did this on purpose. This is a, a character called Diane, played by Bobby Eakes. But when when Becky saw her, she said that she hoped she was Becky because she was going to hear a lot about her, if not. Therefore, informing Becky that actually, even though Jesse had gone on this date, he'd done nothing but talk about Becky. And I'd like to think that Diane did that consciously, knowing that they were going through a rough patch and that her words would actually help make a difference. But even if not, that was a really, really great moment. And ultimately, they share a really important message. And that you don't have to enjoy every single thing that your partner does to be in a loving, committed relationship. You don't have to live in each other's pockets. In fact, it's probably healthier if you have separate interests and you can spend time apart doing your activities and then come back together and spend time together when you're not being forced to do something you enjoy. Of course, there's also the need to make an effort for the other person. But at the same time, having different interests is perfectly okay. And I think they delivered that message in a way that's really lovely and really beautiful. And I also like the fact that they made up within the same episode. Because if they'd left it while they were arguing, it wouldn't have been the most pleasant way to end things. But it's a really good episode. Some really funny moments, but also some really sweet uh, and, and moving. And also uncomfortable moments as well. So an all-round pretty brilliant episode Breaking up is hard to do in 22 minutes is really great.